Hey guys, welcome to another Rhino tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to be using Grasshopper to create this Mobius geometry. We're going to be doing a Mobius strip, and then we're going to extract some elements to create a structure and a panel system. So, first of all, we're going to be creating a circle in Grasshopper. The way that I bring up the, the nodes is by double clicking and just type in the name of the node that I'm going to be using. In this case, I'm going to be using a circle. And if you hover next to the each input or output, it tells you what kind of input goes on each of them. So first of all, we're going to be using a number slider. Just by typing a number, it will create a slider. And we can attach this to the radius input. And we can control the radius of our circle. I'm going to edit the values to have it at a maximum value of 50. So next, we're going to be dividing our circle into different sections, uh, which we're going to be creating frames to place our, our curves or polygons. So we're going to be using the perp frames node. And here we're going to be inputting our curve and create another slider for the number of sections. So this controls uh, the number of sections. And then we're gonna be placing some geometry, curves or polygons into each of the per frames. So we're gonna be using the polygon node Here, as you can see a preview, it's right here on the on the origin of Rhino. So we're gonna be, here it's asking you for a plane, we're gonna be using the, the frames. And if we disable this, we can see that it's been placed on each of the frames. Now we're gonna be creating some sliders for the radius. and also for the sides. So this is controls the radius. We can have this as a floating point. And this controls the, the radius of the polygons and this controls the sides. It's always a good practice to name your sliders so you know what each of them does and instead of like um, having to find them uh, on the nodes you can actually have them here it's easier to model to change them after you done your your nodes connection so now we need to rotate each polygon uh, increasingly until it gets 360 degrees so for that, we're going to be using a rotation node. We're going to input our geometry. And also here, we're going to input our degrees. Uh, right now, it's asking for radians. You can just change the input to degrees. And if we put a number, you'll see that. Uh, oh, and also you need to attach the, the P frames. So it has the, uh, the base plane to rotate it from. You can see that it's just by putting a slider on the angle is rotating them all on the same, the same degree. And what we need is to be increasingly rotating. So for this, we're going to be using the series node. And this creates uh, a series of numbers that are constantly increasing at a constant rate. So for this, we are going to be using the, um, we're going to be creating a number node for the 360 degrees. So we're going to set this number to 360. So this is uh, 360 degrees. And we need to 
divide this by the number of sections. So we're going to be using the division and plug in the sections into it. And if we have a panel, which is really useful to have around, we can see the output of each node. So here it's giving me a value of nine because 360 divided by 40 gives me that number. And it will, it will adjust to the number of sections. So here we can input this into the a step number, which is, you know, if you have it here in the series, it's increasing at nine degrees. And we need to put the count of the output, which is the number of sections. And if we see, we have 40 numbers, if you include the zero, the zero line, as the number of sections. And if we input this on the angles, we'll have the rotation on, on each of the polygons. Now, <clears throat> we can go ahead and loft this. And here on the options, if you right click loft options, you can choose to have it closed. And there you have your Mobius strip. Now we can also increase our rotations or the revolutions of the strip. We can multiply 360 by a constant, by a different node. So we're gonna create a slider for the number of revolutions. We're gonna be using the multiply or the multiplication node. We're gonna be inputting these two numbers and replacing them on the division. So we can increase the number of revolutions or to have none. And we can adjust all these values easily. Okay, and also I wanted to go ahead and um, show how you can have a custom section for the strip. So here in Rhino, I'm just gonna draw Uh, a curve. Let's say we want this as a section instead of the polygon. Um, it's a little bit ugly, sorry. It's, but let's say we want this, which is still ugly. But anyways, we can create a, a curve node, which is this one. And we can set this curve, so one curve, and select them here on Rhino. So this curve from Rhino is now on Grasshopper. So it's connected to this node. And we need to have this curve on each of the sections. So we're gonna be using the Orient node to place them there. And we have our geometry. We can use the initial plane as the same curve. And then the final plane, we're gonna be using our P-frames. And you can see that it's now on the circle. Now it isn't on the center. It's a little bit off the center and we don't want that because when we rotate it, it's gonna rotate. We need them to rotate on the center. So we're gonna be using an area node and this area node gives you also the center of the, of the curve or the geometry. And if we have this as our initial plane, as you can see, creates the, a central point of any geometry. And if we adjust this, it will adjust to the curve, which is it's pretty cool. And now if we plug this in, instead of the polygons, it will replace them we'll see that uh, our custom section has been applied to the strip. And right now it looks really, looks really bad quality and it is because uh, 
Grasshopper is just using. It is because Grasshopper just explained the lowest quality to save some uh, memory and also processing power. But if we go here and we bake this geometry, we'll see that it will give us a smooth result. And this is how do you create a Mobius strip. And on the next video, I'm gonna be exploding this geometry to extract the structure from it and also some panels. So stick around.